So this is the Qingping temperature and humidity monitor for Apple HomeKit. This is yet another HomeKit device which measures the temperature and humidity of your smart home and integrates this data directly into HomeKit for use with scenes and routines. I've been experimenting now for the last couple of weeks with this device to try and get a better insight into how our tumble dryer increases the temperature and humidity of our washroom and it's been a great experiment to run. So after playing around with this device, here are the top 5 things I think you need to know about Qingping's temperature and humidity monitor before you buy. My name is Steven and welcome to Heitechi. Techie is a YouTube channel dedicated to everything to do with the Apple Smart Home, looking at devices that have run with Apple HomeKit, Siri shortcuts, and indeed everything in between. If that sounds like the kind of thing that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button so we know that you've enjoyed this video. As a disclaimer, thank you so much to Qingping for sending us this sensor to review. As always though, we know that we can't buy your trust, and that is why we are always completely honest when we review devices on this channel. We always give you our completely unbiased and honest opinion on every review we make so that you, our viewers, can make the most informed purchasing decisions. Number 1. Great Build Quality The device we're reviewing today is the Qingping Temperature and Humidity Monitor, which is the H version. It's a Bluetooth-based thermometer and humidity sensor, and it really doesn't do much more than that. The H version that I mentioned denotes that it is compatible with HomeKit. Now there is another version of this device, the M version, that only works with the Mi or Mija smart home system. So if you are picking up one of these, and there are links in the description below, make sure to get the HomeKit version. The device comes in this minimalist packaging that is in very much keeping with Apple's own style, and it comes with a manual which is both in English and simplified Chinese, along with a wall mount and battery. The manual also includes the HomeKit code which you'll need to connect it to the Apple Home app. The front of the device is mostly a display itself with a white surrounding circular plastic casing. Now I have to say I am a big fan of this style personally and it's nice to see some deviation from the square or rectangular designs that similar products on the market use. On the back of the device there is another HomeKit code along with a recess button which also serves to work with the included wall mount. The lower half of the back of the circular design is taken up by a kickstand, which also conceals where the battery is located. The device is powered by a CR2430 button battery, like many other smart home devices, so chances are you'll always have one on hand. Qingping has done a great job in the design of this device for mounting it as well. As well as coming with the wall mount, there are magnets embedded in the back of the circular device, which means it can attach itself to other metal surfaces. Now the magnets for this are okay in my opinion, which means that they will stay up and it will hold up the device magnetically, but a slight knock probably will see it fall to the ground. Number 2, e-ink display with great viewing angles. The display of this sensor is an e-ink display, which again regular viewers of the channel will know that I'm a big fan of, as it provides an easily readable screen from almost any angle. There's no backlighting to this device though, so you won't be able to read it in the dark, but as long as there's light, you should be able to see it from complete 180 degree viewing angles. From the top of the display, there is a Bluetooth logo, which I'm really not sure why this is here, along with a little battery indicating the battery status. Below this is the temperature when large numbering, which can easily be displayed in Celsius Fahrenheit and toggled using the recess button in the back. Below the temperature figure is the relative humidity reading. The numbers are good and bold on the display and I've been able to see the numbers on the screen easily at a glance. However, that brings us to point number three, which is poor battery life. Whilst e-ink displays are known for being really excellent for battery life, for some reason this device just seems to be extremely power intensive. Whilst Qingping's Amazon listing says that the battery should last on average 8 months, this definitely doesn't appear to be accurate based on my testing, where the battery has fallen significantly only within a couple of weeks. If the current rate continues, I'd expect to change the battery every couple of months at this rate, which isn't ideal. Now, I'm not sure if this is as a result of it being located in a washroom where the temperature and humidity can fluctuate with the washing machine and dryer cycles, but it is definitely disappointing. Number 4. Bluetooth 
Now the fourth point to make is that this device works using Bluetooth 5.0, which while a good Bluetooth standard is still well past the standards of which most of our smart homes are using. Now eagle-eyed viewers may have spotted that there is a thread symbol on this version of the product, and this confused me too when I unboxed it originally. Now it turns out that Qingping are currently working on a new version of this device with the same display that does have thread connectivity, which would be amazing, but unfortunately this device as it currently stands doesn't support thread, and it doesn't come up on my Eve network of devices. Now this might be somewhat harsh from me because this sensor was originally released in 2020, but those who are looking to pick up one of these now really should bear this in mind. The impact of using Bluetooth is that there is quite a delay between the temperature that is shown on the device being updated and reflected in the Apple Home app. Now this might not be a problem for many users, but if you were using this with say temperature based automations for instance, there might be quite a gap between the temperature trigger being reached and the automation actually happening. Qingping launched a software update recently to help with this and it does seem to have improved the problem, but fundamentally there will always be constraints on this because the device runs on Bluetooth and it's never going to be as quick or as efficient as Zigbee or Wi-Fi connections. For me, I think this largely defeats the purpose of this device, but for other users it might not be a massive issue, however it is one that you really should know before buying. Number 5. You need a HomeKit hub for this device. The final point for this video is more of a technical requirement, because the device works using Bluetooth, you will absolutely need to have a HomeKit hub in order to use this device in HomeKit. With iOS 16 launching next week, HomeKit hubs now include HomePods, HomePod Mini or Apple TVs, as support for iPad has now been dropped. Another core requirement for this is that because it is Bluetooth, the Qingping sensor will need to be within Bluetooth range of your HomeKit hub as well. Now that's not a huge distance and that means that if you've got a large home there's going to be a lot of places where this device is going to be entirely useless for you. Even in my small house, there have been times in which when doors are closed, between the living room and the washroom, that the connection has dropped. Now this obviously isn't ideal, but again, it might mean that this device is ideal if you want to use it directly beside or near to your HomeKit hub devices. So there you have it then, this is Qingping's basic temperature and humidity monitor for HomeKit. Overall, I'd say the device is okay, but if nothing else, it really shows us just how quickly smart home devices change and develop. In 2022, I think this is largely outdated now at this point, despite some more recent software updates, but there may be some space for it in your smart home. I would be really interested in revisiting this conclusion though once the new Thread Edition comes out. It's not clear if Jinping can launch this with a software update for their existing devices, or if a new purchase will be required. Here's hoping for the former, and I'll be publishing updates on our Instagram and new TikTok pages whenever I have news on this. At the moment though, you can pick up one of these on Amazon for around £16 or $19 in the United States, which is honestly not too bad, even with its limitations. The retail price is around £35, which is far too much in this day and age. There's a link in the description if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, please make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And why not leave me a comment too, letting me know what you make of this device. Until next time, I've been Steven, for Hey Techie.